Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another episode of the show. And we've got uh, more Bordeaux wine, finally doing some reviews here at the house. Um, so continuing with uh, the, the supermarket wines we got from Carrefour, uh, we've got two more wines to do today. We're going to do, um, uh, these are full bottles now. This doesn't look like a full bottle, but it is a 750 milliliter or 75 centiliter as they, they decide to uh, call it over there. Um, this is uh, a product of Southwest France or Sudouest, Sudwest, whatever. Um, and the label just says Cuve Speciale uh, Cahors, um, and that's about it. There's really no producer named on it. It does say that it was uh, uh, made and bottled in uh, Le Cellier du Sudouest. But that doesn't really tell you anything. I found a uh, place on the internet called that, and they sell wine, but this wasn't on there. Okay, so um, bought it for one one point seven four euros, which today translates to about two dollars and forty two cents. So cheap wine. All right. So uh, again, this is a wine that you can buy in the grocery store. I, that's what I was going for when I bought this wine and the other one. Uh, just kind of the ordinary person in France that they're going to buy some wine at the grocery store, something that's inexpensive for them, and um, uh, we're going to do that. Plus, after I do these wines, uh, then we'll have the Halloween, and then we've got the more expensive wines, the, the upper echelon wines from France that I bought. So, um, first of all, Cahors. Well, Cahors is, a, um, is an area of France. It's a town in France in the southwest part of France. It's kind of on the eastern part of the southwest part of France. Um, it's southeast of Bordeaux. It's just north of Toulouse. If that's so if you're getting your maps out, you kind of know where that is. Um, Cahors is a uh, is really where the Malbec grape kind of is uh, best known. Uh, before before South America, you know, kind of made Malbec popular. Cahors is where the Malbec grape really is where. Uh, it was the primary grape in, in the blend of wines. Um, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's from the area, it's from the southwest part of France. So when you had the big Malbec craze or that we're in there right now, um, these guys did it first, let's put it that way. So this particular wine um, has no vintage, by the way. Um, so it could be grapes from any year. It could be grapes from last year, it could have been grapes from three years ago, uh, but it's probably, you know, a couple years worth of grapes in here. Um, according to the back label, it's a minimum of 70% Malbec, uh, and then it'll have Merlot and Tanat. So I can't give you an exact range of what's in here, uh, but it has to have at least 70% um, Malbec in the wine. So uh, we're going to go and get right into it. Uh, I'm not expecting a whole heck of a lot from these wines because they are pretty cheap. But um, you never know, you might find something uh, kind of cool. And this is something you're probably not going to find in the United States anywhere. I'm not going to find this specific bottle. They make just enough um, for local consumption. Heck, you may not even be able to find this up in um, Paris, you know, because I bought this in uh, Poyac, or was it actually Poyac? Yeah, it was the Poyac Carrefour. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how it is. Color-wise, looks pretty good. Uh, nothing too deep. Um, viscosity is is all right. It's a 12, I think it was 12.5% alcohol. Yeah, 12.5% alcohol. So let's check it out. So just getting, uh, getting kind of 
darker red fruits on the nose. Um, it's not a very, uh, not getting a lot of minerality off of it. It's, um, like I said, darker red fruits, but I'm, I'm also getting probably more of the raspberry stuff. Not much else as minerality or floral. Um, I'm sure there's a little bit in there. I'm trying to work on you know having descriptors for uh, blind tasting where you have to have fruits and minerality and, and floral stuff. By the way, we're gonna be doing some blind tasting eventually. Not yet, but we're gonna be working on that. Maybe a tad bit of creaminess to it, but. Not much in the nose. Let's see how it tastes. Man, for a couple bucks. Not bad. I mean, anytime I have wine this cheap, I'm always going to think of Charles Shaw type of stuff. Um, this is just your ordinary everyday table wine. Um, it gets the job done. It's it doesn't taste bad. Um, it's I would actually say it's kind of a more of a fruit forward wine. Uh, again, raspberry seems to be pre the predominant uh, flavor to it. I'm getting some more spices now uh, on the nose. The spiciness is starting to come through a little bit on the palate. Now it's kind of allowed to breathe a little bit. Um, shouldn't necessarily confuse us with an Argentinian Malbec or or anything from you know South American Malbec. Um, tannins are starting to be a little bit more, and that might be with the Tanat. Tanat's a very tannic um, grape varietal. But honestly, for Dude, for $2.50, you can't go wrong with this. Now, score-wise, well, it's not like it's a 90-point wine. Um, it's enjoyable. Uh, it doesn't really, doesn't really um, grab you as being anything like uh, uh, excellent, but the balance is actually there. I mean, it's not too tannic. Um, it's probably a little, a little light on the acid, um, but the fruit's there. Got a little bit of spice. Um, alcohol is just fine. It's not. It's not hot. Which most of these wines, European wines, are not going to be like high alcohol anyway. Yep, it's a decent wine, especially considering your paint. Now, if I had paid say twenty bucks for this wine, I'd be like, no way. So score on the wine, give it like an 82. It's, it's not, not a bad wine. Uh, it's not like a stellar wine, but um, it's, it's pretty decent. So, so yeah. If you're in France and you're at a car of four and you only got a couple bucks to spend or a couple euros to spend, and you want something that's just going to be something to have for, you know, at dinner tonight at, at, the, uh, at the house, sure. Um, it's probably no worse or better than anything else that's going to be on the shelf over there. So, uh, you know, I'd, I'd recommend to buy it because it's, it's relatively inexpensive. So, yeah. Um, let's see. What else? All right. Well, now that I've, I've come back uh, from France um, and we've caught up with all the episodes that I recorded over there and they're up on the website, um, I've got a whole bunch more wines to go through. What's going on uh, over the next few weeks uh, on, on the personal side as far as what I'm going to be doing uh, event-wise I'm going to be going, going to a couple events. They're not my events. They're the other wine bloggers' event. Uh, I would highly encourage you to go to Vinicely Speaking. Um, that's uh, Ceci Barreto. She, uh, she's the other wine blogger here in San Antonio. And um, she's got a couple events coming on. Uh, the uh, Halloween 
Uh, so if you're local and you can make it Halloween, she's also got one for uh, Beaujolais, uh, for the Beaujolais Nouveau release. Uh, I believe we're going to do like a, one Beaujolais Nouveau and then we're going to do some, uh, probably some Cru Beaujolais. Uh, I'm also going to be participating in uh, Wine Twits uh, Beaujolais Nouveau tasting from uh, George de Booth. So I'll be hitting the uh, wine shop early in the morning or when they open up at 10 uh, to, buy, to buy a bottle of that. But I'm also going to, kind of like what I'm going to do later that night, is I'm going to buy a couple more uh, Cru Beaujolais just to kind of talk about the differences between the two and, um, and, and do that. They're doing a live streaming. I'll be probably on Ustream with that. Uh, I'll probably have, I'll have Skype running, so if you want to Skype in, we'll do that in the afternoon. Uh, and then that night, I'll be going over to the event uh, locally. Uh, episode 200 is coming up. Planning on doing a live tasting, similar to what, what I'm doing with Ceci. Uh, I'm going to work with her on doing that. It's going to be a live event, uh, open to the public. I uh, haven't come up with any costs or anything, but it, you'll have to pay to, to attend. It's not going to be a freebie. I'm not buying all the wine to to give you know to give out. Um, so it's going to be it's going to be a paid event. Uh, so we have full disclosure and all that. And um, let's see, those those are the big things that are coming up. Uh, obviously, Halloween. This 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 is uh, Wednesday's. This is tomorrow's episode. No, this is Friday's episode. So Halloween's the next episode. So uh, make sure you watch that one. I'll be recording it tonight. Uh, release it on Halloween. Um, got three wines. Gonna have a little fun with that. Hopefully the lighting will be a little bit better uh, than last time. And uh, I'll be doing a Thanksgiving one too, eventually. So uh, got lots of stuff going on. Um, and uh, hope everyone's uh, enjoying it. Oh, one quick thing: the Joys of Your Dream one somehow did not make it on TiVo. I don't know why. Um, the feed is fine. Uh, the 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 episode that's up now is on TiVo. So why that one didn't go, I don't know. So hey, that's a reason to go visit the website. So go visit the website um, so you can watch that uh, episode. Uh, one of my favorite episodes uh, that I've done just because of uh, a lot of stuff with it, um, and just it was a you know the uh, Olivier was just absolutely just a great host for not knowing or not remembering actually that I had, that I was coming that day and just, you know, taking the time to, uh, to do that. So watch that episode. It's about 30 minutes long and uh, we're going to wrap it up. We'll see everybody again next time. The next one's Halloween. And then I'm going to be doing after that and do some more supermarket wine. We'll see everybody again next time.